Hi, my name is Harlan. Welcome to the H. Matricon Mechanical Engineering Channel. Our topic for today is all air heating, ventilating, and air conditioning systems. But before we proceed, please click the subscribe button just in case you haven't subscribed yet to our YouTube channel. All air heating, ventilating, and air conditioning systems. There are three main types of heating, ventilating, and air conditioning systems. The first one is all air. The second one is the combination of air, water. And the third one is all water uh, system. All air heating, ventilating, and air conditioning system. It's called all air because air is the medium of heat transfer through the building uh, delivery system. So there are two classifications of air, all air systems according to the airflow rate. The first one is the constant air volume system and the second one is the variable air volume system. And for the constant air volume system, set point temperature of the space is maintained by holding the airflow rate constant while modulating the supply air temperature. And for the, constant, for the variable air volume system, uh, the set point is being maintained for the space temperature uh, by uh, holding the supply air temperature constant and modulating the airflow rate. And so this is an illustration of the basic single zone all air system. We have here the outside air going through the filter, heating co cooling coil, heating coil and the supply air fan and going to the zone and you have the return air fan which is interlocked with the supply air fan going to the exhaust air and part of it is being uh, returned uh, to mix with the outside air. And advantages of all air systems, close control of zone temperature and humidity. Second is simultaneous heating and cooling can be achieved very easily and uh, AC change over achieved using the HVAC controls and it is well suited for changes in office space or layout uh, of uh, retail space whatever. And equipment is centrally located and it is well suited for energy saving device such as uh, heat recovery systems and for uh, air economizers and for large outside air requirements and no drain pipe or power wiring in occupied areas and duct leaks um, produce less damage. Ad disadvantages of all air systems, air balancing is difficult and funnel is, is noticed in some types of spaces. The duct presence adds to building height requirements and it is difficult to correct indoor conditions in individual rooms, duct leaks may be overlooked and sometimes it is inadequate for perimeter spaces in cold locations. Constant air volume system. So you have, actually this is the same as uh, what we presented for the all air systems, basic single zone. And the you have here the preheater which functions only during winter time to prevent the cooling coil from freezing during temp temperatures of outside air uh, lower than 55 degrees Fahrenheit. We have a dehumidifier which also operates during winter time only just in case the uh, supply air is very dry that it is uncomfortable so you need a humidifier. So as I've said the Zone temperature is maintained by keeping the supply airflow rate constant and modulating the air supply, supply air temperature uh, as needed. And the application is for residential units. One uh, type, one example is the DX split type air conditioning system. Advantages of constant air volume system. It is less expensive to install, it is durable, it is reliable, and it is suited for single zone buildings. Disadvantages, it is less energy efficient. And what happens if it serves two different zones? 
like this uh, you have uh, the supply air that serves two different zones a coffee shop and an office and let's say for example uh, the time is 6 30 in the evening the office is already closed but there are two employees working on overtime and the coffee shop is at the peak hours lots of people at 6 30 in the evening so uh, we need more cooling in the coffee shop and less cooling in the office so what happens is you will experience uh, uh, discomfort in the coffee shop because it's too hot so you cannot just adjust the temperature setting because if you increase it the people in the office will be uncomfortable also because they will feel that it's too cold so that's why there is a uh, modification of the constant volume aerodynamic system which is the reheat system so you have a reheater for each zone uh, if in case uh, we're in the supply air temperature is lower than the temperature set point for the coffee shop and also for the office so T1 is less than T2 T1 is also less than T3 and as the need arises you can use the reheat coil uh, to raise the temperature uh, when uh, it is too cold so air uh, heat is applied as a secondary process and uh, the heating can be accomplished using hot water using electricity or steam it is uneconomical to add heat to cool the air in order to control zone temperature and so you have to consult the building code and ASHRAE standard 90.1 ASHRAE American Society of Heating Refrigerating and Air Conditioning Engineers standard 90.1 in considering a reheat system for your HVAC requirement we have the dual duct constant air volume system so you have one duct for hot air and another duct for cool air now, so the supply air fan uh, from the supply air fan it branches into two ducts and it is mixed for each individual zone using uh, reverse acting damper so if you close the uh, hot air damper you also open up by an equivalent amount the cooled air damper so you have you will maintain a constant flow of uh, air into the coffee shop or uh, to your office so dual duct constant air volume system is uh, temperature is controlled in each zone by mixing the cold air and the hot air so multi-zone system the duct from the supply air fan branches out into two lines one is for heating coil and the other one is for cooling and uh, the set point temperature is being controlled by these reverse acting dampers uh, on the heating duct and the cooling duct and it goes into a common duct for which serves the two zones variable air volume system so it's just the same with regards to this uh, illustration it's the same except that the fans the fan is variable speed so again we set the supply air temperature constant and modulate the fan airflow so during part load conditions what happens is airflow is being reduced and energy transfer to the coil is also reduced in proportion to the change in airflow the power from the fan is expected to be reduced in proportion to the cube of the airflow but only down to a certain limit we cannot lower it further because minimum airflow needs to be maintained to maintain a duct pressure and uh, minimum ventilating requirements ventilation requirements need to be complied with based on ASHRAE 62.1 uh, you need air outside air certain quantity of outside air for breathing and for health requirements there are three ways to modulate the airflow of the supply air fan fan outlet dampers throttle the airflow uh, 
the effect is you will have higher pressure drop across the dampers and you will have the second one is adjustable inlet guide vanes or IGVs which is expect uh, more efficient than the first one and the third is variable frequency drive which I like a lot. I favor variable frequency drives over these the first two ones and for common application is for larger densely occupied areas with variable cooling loads such as arenas, uh, gymnasiums, auditoriums, cafeterias, churches, large meeting rooms. And more recently, the single zoned variable air volume system is being used in units such as smaller classrooms, uh, offices, dormitories, and retail stores. Advantages of VAV systems, we have precise control of space temperature and um, it can be used for dehumidification, very energy efficient and well suited for multi-zone buildings. Disadvantage is uh, more expensive to, to install and it has more electronic components. So what happens when a VAV system serves two different zones? So we have here a VAV box for each zone and in the same example as the office and the coffee shop, so during uh, during cold uh, during summertime, and uh, the ones working in the office on overtime will feel it's very cold there. So uh, the damper can close this uh, flow of the supply air temperature, the uh, flow of uh, supply air here. So then. Uh, you also have a heater, so it will be more comfortable for the for the people in the office. We have a pressure sensor in case um, both office and coffee shop are less occupied. So these dampers close, the pressure will build up here. So it sends a signal to the controller to reduce the speed of the supply air fan. What happens when the airflow to each zone is reduced? So at 100% airflow, which is ideal, so we the airflow travel could could be seen because of high velocity of the air. It travels along the ceiling line, so distribution is much better, and it uh, deteriorates when you reduce the airflow to 50%. It goes down towards the floor, so uh, the travel is uh, is uh, limited travel of the air. But when you reduce it further to 20%, cold air will just be dumped downwards towards the floor uh, totally. So that uh, this is what is cold air dumping. Because cold air uh, goes down and warm air goes up. So we have the induction type VEB box to solve the problem. So a damper controls the amount of cool air going through the zone. And uh, so it provides a venturi effect here, part of the zone air is being recirculated as secondary air and being sucked in this venturi going back to the office. So you will have a constant flow of uh, air to the office to avoid cold air dumping. Series fan powered VAV box. So in the series fan powered VAV box, supply air is being controlled, the cold supply air being controlled by this dumper here in the VAV box and we have a common uh, a motor having a constant speed. So as you close this uh, supply, air, supply air damper, what will happen is uh, you will suck more of the secondary air, circulate more, so you will have a constant flow, air flow going to the zone so because the fan is of constant speed uh, supply air so the requirements of the the, the requirement cooling requirements will be the one used to size the fan yeah so you will need uh, in case it is summertime it's very hot this one will be fully open and you will need uh, proper CFM to uh, supply in order to cool down the people in the coffee shop. And for the intermittent fan, 
PAV box, you have the fan which is an intermittent fan and it <coughs> sucks in the secondary air coming from the zone and the damper controls the supply air. So during cooling season, uh, the uh, fan here is off and only the damper controls the supply air, cold supply air. And during winter time, uh, this is fully closed and this one, the fan operates, so providing air circulation here. So during winter, during winter time. During summertime, it's the supply air that's pushing the cold air here towards the zone. So what is the purpose of this? What is the advantage? So during winter time, we can close this valve here and then we can switch off this fan so it will just circulate the air in an unoccupied area. For, for instance, a coffee shop is um, unoccupied during Christmas day so it just circulates warm air uh, through this fan. So this is an intermittent fan. What is important is before you start this fan, um, make sure that this is closed first. Otherwise, it will find its way to the least resistance. So uh, that was our lecture for today regarding all air systems. And the next topic we will discuss about is the comparison and the analysis of constant air volume and variable air volume systems. Thank you and uh, invite your friends to watch and subscribe to our mechanical engineering channel. Thank you.